Good evening and uh, welcome and uh, thank you very much for joining me. I'll just check I've drunk my coffee, I have. Oops. Hang on. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do tonight, I was talking to uh, Nigel this afternoon. Uh, Nigel, who I did the AP76 for, uh, that got smashed in the post. And we're endeavouring to uh, get him his money back. So the wheels for that are in motion. Uh, anyway, while we were on the telephone, um, he mentioned that he'd that he'd actually attempted to repair an SP25 Mark III, and he didn't have any success with this endeavour, or limited, I think he said, but I can't remember exactly. Anyway, and what, what, what the issue is, the issue, this, this is an SP25 Mark IV, but from the Mark II all the way up, the Mark I was different, it's the only one that was different, because instead of it being auto here, it said lift. Uh, the queuing lever was at the end here. You moved it up and then you brought it down to the on position to drop it onto the record. Then on the Mark II they changed it and this became auto. Anyway, and it's a bit grubby this one, isn't it? It needs a bit of a polish. But uh, this has been serviced. This is not going to be serviced. Uh, the, uh, the nature of the video really needs a sir clip in that as well. So I've just noticed the circuit's missing. Let's see if I've got some. Anyway, the nature of the video really surrounds this switch. So if we go to... What do we want? We'll have camera four. We'll have camera four because we're going to be... And we can move back and forth if we need to. So we'll start with camera four. Now... There we go. Now, now the, let me make sure that we're, we're focused. There we are. Right. Now, the queries are around this switch. And basically, when you move this switch to the on position, that switches the motor on and it lets you move, operate the machine manually. Now, when you move the switch to there, it stays there on the SP25 and other versions, it stays there. The mechanism then comes to life and as you see the switch slowly drops and that shouldn't go all the way across and come back so <laughs> yeah uh, that's probably because it's probably because it's been cocked on its back like that let's go back yeah that's because of that anyway uh, and this this switch as you know so we go back and do that again and that's done that because it's on its back right because it's position it's in so don't worry about that and that switch then comes back to there which is normal now on the auto changer mechanism which we'll just bring up. Um, I'll show you the same scenario. <coughs> <coughs> now, 
Now, this is full of dust. It's got food crumbs and everything on it. Let's give it a wipe before we. I don't know what that is. Give it a wipe before we come on camera. This looks really rough, this has been this auto slim, but trust me, it's in lovely condition when it's polished. Right. Now, this is the Gadard Auto Slim. Now, this is the Auto Slim I rebuilt a few months ago. Now, on the Auto Slim, The switch it works the same way for on, but comes straight back, doesn't latch because it's all done by the control arm. So if we go up now on the automatics, and that's gone across. And when the control arm's down, I'm gonna be I'm gonna have to put the camera down to do this. It comes back and it turns off. And basically basically it's how these are configured. Now this is the, the auto slim and as you can see it comes straight back that way because it's supposed to. I'll bring you up here, there. It's supposed to come straight back, which it does. Uh, I need to find a hung for this auto slim. It's got to be put into something. So if I move that, and put that back there, bring our SP25 back. Right. Now, if we put this one on its back, there we go. If we look at this one. Now you can see that it's slightly different. And the turntable plate has just fell off. No mind, it can stay off for a minute. Right. Now. If I. Now. If I bring your, if I can draw your attention. Just find some of this file will do. To here. This is your difference, this slot here is not in the auto slim. So when you move the lever, you see this here. That drops, and that, back, that part is not in the auto slim. And it's that part there that does the same job as the control arm. It basically it goes to that bit of a linkage down there which then goes and operates that linkage you can see there the bottom there and that's how it works on the SP25 now on the SP25 if this if this goes up and comes straight back down then it means that this is seized in that position. See, it comes, that's working just like the auto changer now. Now this has to be lubricated. Let me just turn the camera. Now this has to be, just make sure we're, just, just, just tweak the focus. 
Whoops, wrong way. I'll do. There we go. Right. Now. There's a couple of different now. Now. Like I say. What happens is. This. Seizes onto its pivot here. Yeah. What you have to do. Is you have to heat this up. With a heat gun. Or a soldering iron. And you have to lift this off. You take the little circle clip off. And you have to take this off. And there's a spring here. There's a spring there. Which is the return spring. If I can bring, bring us a bit more in. There. Yeah. yeah, I'll do. There's a spring there. Which is our return spring. And no matter how strong that spring is. If that's not lubricated. That won't come back. And by the other, by the other same measure. By the other same thing. If this is not lubricated. This will stay up here. And if, I, if you operate the cycle. Which I will do by hand. Oops. Try not to trap my fingers. It will just continuously reject. Well, yeah, it will. It will just continuously reject. Because. Let's get that back into where it should be. There we go. So basically if that's if that is if that is if you move if this is seized and you move that like that basically there's every chance it won't go but if it does that it'll just continue to reject but there's every chance it won't go because if it's seized that simulate it being seized There. See that, and that'll just stay there. That's it seized. I mean, it's hard to do that because it naturally wants to move. There. And what you do, you have to take this off, and that's all that causes that problem. Just this bar here. It's that one bar that causes that problem. Just that piece there. That's all it is causes it and a lot of people have a lot of trouble with it um, you know and yeah so I can understand why you know I can understand why because you know a lot of people well well they don't they don't look I mean I, I've come across it before today but I just bring this back up I've come across it today, where before today, where people have tried to undo that there because they think it's a screw. It's not. You don't undo that. You turn that, and you'll you'll actually twist it. You'll actually you'll actually snap it off. Uh, why they put a screw head in there, I don't know, but it's certainly not a screw. Uh, I know that because I tried to undo it on a scrapper, but it's definitely not a screw. And you never turn that with a screwdriver. You'll, you'll run the risk of loosening it or damaging it. And it's actually riveted. It's not riveted to the metal. It's riveted to this lever here. It's me, be, me being stupid. I had a bit of a brain fart there. And basically, that's all that's, that, that's how that me part of the mechanism works. It's up and it locks in. And we, if we turn the cycling gear... You see it slowly come back to the play position. Now we're at rest. Yeah, I'm making sure. Yeah, we're now we're at rest. Now we come to the end of the record. 
Record is rejected. Mechanism is turned off. The other, the, the, the other problem I think this can suffer from. If I hold that there. If I, if I put my finger there to stop it moving. No, it doesn't. Uh, now, when these don't turn off at the end of a record, that is caused by further down here. That is caused by, you can see that lever there. If that seizes up, let's go to it. If that seizes up, then it won't switch off or it won't switch on. And that's how that works. Or, or, or sometimes you'll get them where is it where where they won't where where what will happen now if I hold that there and I turn it it will just switch straight off there we don't even need to go all the way around but we will and this has to be lubricated and it, on its pivot post uh, this has to be lubricated here and you take the clip off remove it clean it put it back on lubricate it <coughs> and this lever here the main, the main on off lever its pivot point is underneath the spring it's underneath this return spring here that lift you up a bit The pivot point is just here. It goes on to this. So you, you, what you do, you take the return spring off. You take this off. And you then take the clip off. Which then, you can then heat that up. And you take that off. And this bottom bit here is a separate unit. Uh, this part here, see? If I can bring the camera down. If we get the file again. For my fat fingers. See that bit I'm moving there. Well that's a separate unit. That basically pushes. That basically pushes. The. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> the I've had another brain fart. Uh, what's it called? Uh, that basically pushes the. Oh, it's got a name, and I'm always correcting people when they get it wrong. And they, how dare you! Uh, it basically when you when you put it onto automatic, it pushes this lever here, which is the velocity trip lever. I knew it'd come back to me. This is the velocity trip lever, and that is pushed by that, and that comes apart by unhooking it from there and it also has a return it has a return spring there and that's pretty simple I mean and the, the return spring for this is also this spring here and that's it that is it. Now if we go to the automatic version, if we go to the, the auto changer version, and that's it for the SP25. If we go to the auto changer, I'll just put the, I'll just put its turntable back on. We're going to mess under there. It needs a clean. 
I don't think that's this original clip, that's off something else. But it doesn't matter, it won't fall off, and that's all we want. It does the job. Uh, I need to rummage through my clips. Yeah, just make sure that way. There we are. Right, now. Now. I'll tell you what, my hacker got a lot of views. Uh, you know, you all enjoyed. I'll just get rid of this malware, but malware bites thing off the screen. There we go. Get get away. A lot of you enjoyed my my hacker grenadier uh, videos. Uh, they seem to go down quite well, and especially the one where I demonstrated and I explained about the voltages that seemed to go down I mean uh, I mean we do want our amps to run as as cool as possible don't we folks right now let's get back onto the matter at hand now if we look at the auto slim and this is basically the blueprint for all for most garage changers uh, there's one or two that were different but for most of them this was the blueprint for just about them all uh, this was the first this was regarded as the first true reliable changer and I agree with that now if you look at the mechanism you see there's something missing our bar that holds this lever up here that isn't on this one that so the lever just falls straight back to the on position or the manual position uh, this is still here that moves our velocity trip that's still there because that still moves our velocity trip so that's still there because our velocity trip is here we come down the velocity trip is there and this if I actuate the auto still moves it and uh, you know pretty much the rest of it works the same way as the SP25 it pretty much works the same way except you haven't got this uh, you haven't got this uh, where 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 that where that thing that looks like a screw head is that post. It's just a hole. Uh, this hasn't got the retainer on it for the spring. The spring is part of the the return spring on this one is part of the mounting for the armrest, and it comes down to here. And this is also like on the other one. If I move it, you can just see, oops, you can see that that's a separate part as well. See it move? Now, down here, we're pretty much, we're pretty much the same. Uh, if I pull tension on there, it'll turn it off. And that's how that works. Um, and if I if I pull our control arm out if I can turn the mechanism on now you see you see well you can see now the bottom where it moves it on the SP25 and holds it there Whereas that's done by the control arm on the automatic version. And, you know, that's how, you know, th that's how they got around it. And it's a very, very simple method to do it. It's a very, a very good and ingenious way of getting it to work in single player mode. Of course, the SP25 Mark 1 uh, doesn't have... The, the facility for the arm to go over on its own because it's not designed to be, to be used like that. 
but everything after the Mark 1, the Mark 2, everything SP25 and some of the other models they all use the they all use the basic the basic mechanism that I've just shown you on the SP25 and this is basically the same mechanism all that's missing is that part there and the spring that's all that's missing you could in theory if you could anchor the spring you could in theory turn this into a single play but why would you want to but uh, it is possible to do it but uh, but we like our auto changers uh, here at Vintage Electronics Repair and I know you guys and girls certainly do as well and uh, do you know I think this is a 1964 model because look at that 2664 that could be the 26 week or the 26 day of 1964 yeah but that being said um, we need to find a home to put this in this needs to be needs to be used really um, and it's complete and I'm really you know really itching to find a, a find a use for this and I've even got oh it's got an idler in it has it got a circlip in this one I would imagine so yeah it has the only thing is that's that moves so that'll be glued into place I had to put another mat on it because the mat had rotted but I'm not bothered about that I can live with that and you know, let me talk a bit about this. Let me talk about a bit about this Garrard uh, Auto Slim turntable instruction uh, card. Now, it's got a couple of dings in it there now, but it's, been, it's had other stuff placed on it, unfortunately. Uh, but my my friend, my friend Andy in Blackpool, he makes these. And he makes them himself, and they're to scale. And he also he also he also offers them for sale. I don't know how much he charges for them. I can't remember. But look at that. Look at the quality. And they're not they're not done on paper. They're done on really nice card. Uh, they feel really good. And uh, you know he does them himself. Uh, he does them to order. And. Uh, you know whatever record that you've got if it came with one originally I would imagine he could do it for you uh, but he can certainly do this and he can do the BSRs I believe um, I've actually got a BSR one knocking about somewhere which I was given uh, the UA8 one which has got to go on me Pete Old Scott when I can finally get in the bedroom to get to me Pete Old Scott but this needs a good polish this uh, this SP20, uh, this Auto Slim. Um, but that's basically how they work. And, uh, you know, Garrard kept it relatively simple uh, with the mechanisms. Let's bring the SP25 back up. Uh, maybe I'll try and get them both in shot. Um, you know, I've made this video really. I've made it really for Nigel because uh, uh, Nigel raised the question about how does it work because he's having a bit of difficulty with one so I said well tonight I'll make a video and I'll try and explain as best I can now BSR they took a different route I'll explain how they did theirs in another video but uh, as you can see the SP25 uh, sorry the Auto Slim uh, let's turn that off we'd never leave them on uh, and there's the SP25 and you can clearly see the similarities I mean they came up with a formula Garrard came up with a formula that was a winner 
They came up with an idea that was a winner and they stuck with it. Right up until the end. Uh, right up until the end, uh, they made a, another changer. It was a cheap changer and I can't remember what model it was, but it had a very, very thin silver control arm on it. And uh, they were very, 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 even though they were very cheaply made, they still had a metal turntable. All garards had a metal turntable, as far as I'm aware. I've never seen one with a plastic turntable. Uh, you know, Garrard obviously believed the best metal for making a turntable was metal, and that is absolutely true. Uh, but, uh, you know, the design of the mechanism never really changed. Um, you know, they found a formula that was good and they stuck with it. And quite rightly so, if it works, why change it? And that was it really, there's not really a lot more I can say. I mean, uh, I mean the, the SP25s, uh, you know, they were nearly, not quite, but they were nearly a transcription turntable. They weren't far off, you know, uh, they were nearly there. In fact, to be honest with you, uh, in my opinion, I think an SP25 is better than, a, better than an AP76. And the AP76 is classed as a transcription turntable. But uh, I, th I think the SP25s are better. Uh, and uh, the only reason why I like the Zero, because the Zero shares its mechanism with the AP76 and a few others. And the reason why I like the Zero is the arm that's on the Zero. Uh, the specially designed... Uh, Pantograph arm, I like that. And I don't like it because it looks good, I like it because it works. It actually does what it's supposed to do. Uh, which is eliminate playing errors. But these were made, you know, these were robust little, these were robust units. I mean, they were made, they were made to take a pound in. And uh, they were made to be reliable providing you service them and uh, I've never yet come across one that's been wore out I've had some scrappers because somebody's been at them and uh, there's been bits missing from them for that reason or bits broken that you can't replace or you know it's like, it's like, the, it's like the spindle that's here this spindle they're like rocking horse manure there's, they're, they're, they're rare and this spindle only works with this deck you cannot use any other spindle in this deck it works with that spindle you can use the multi spin you can use the large oil spindle but you still have to have one of them to slide that over uh, and this has a this has a diameter uh, which is smaller than any other Garrard made. Because um, I sold one, I, I didn't know that at one time, and I sold one on eBay. A white one just like this, and it was in lovely condition, but it had no centre spindle. And I sold it as no centre spindle. I made it clear that the centre spindle wasn't with it, it wasn't with it, was missing when I got it. And, uh, God blimey, the person who bought that did nothing but complain about there was no centre spindle, but it was in the listing. You see, he was happy to get it for the cheap price, but he thought any spindle had fit. And when he discovered that it wouldn't, because uh, I didn't know it didn't at the time, it was a new one on me, I must admit, because I'd never thought about it. And uh, he asked me if I knew, and I said, no, I didn't, but I do now. Uh, but, uh, you know, I discovered that uh, the spindle was unique to this. And I have got a spare in the, in the uh, spares drawer down the bottom here. And I'll never sell it, because you never know, one day I might get another, another auto slim that needs a spindle. Uh, 
I think even though the AT6 is very similar to this, I think even that has a different spindle. But I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Because it might use the same. I'll have to check that out. I've got, I've got an AT6. I'll have to check that out, I suppose. Uh, find out. But yeah, I could be wrong there. But... The spindle is very, very, very hard to find. And uh, if you do have one, keep hold of it. And uh, the spare I've got is not for sale. I've got a couple of spindles knocking about. Mainly, most of the spindles I've got are BSR. But uh, but that's just... This is, I'm not going to ramble off too far. Because I'm going off the tangent now. But that was how Garrard did it. And they did it in a way which kept it simple. But BSR had their way as well. And I'll show you the BSR. What I'll do, uh, maybe tomorrow night, I might do another video explaining how BSR did it. And show you how they got around the problem of using an auto changer as a single player with fully function automatic function. I might make another video tomorrow and explain that one. Because I've got a BSR down there, uh, the right one to demonstrate, and I've got another one in the front room, well, in the dining room, which is the right one to demonstrate. So we can, uh, you know, we, we can take a look at them and see where we go. And I might do that tomorrow night. I'm going to leave it there for now. Because there's nothing else I can talk about. Uh, I've, I think I've covered everything. If anybody wants to know anything else. Then yeah feel free. Uh, that's what the channel's about. Is to inform people. <coughs> oh pardon me. Ooh, I don't know what I've had. But I think I'm going to have a. I think I think I think I'm gonna have an ass storm later. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have the shit. Uh, the two bob bits, you know, the brown rain, the dreaded brown rain. Yeah, well, as long as I don't have a two-way traffic down a one-way street, I'm not bothered. Anyway, folks, listen, I'm gonna leave it there. If you want to know anything else, then please, you know, feel free to leave it in the comments and ask. And if I know, then I'll tell you. You know, simple. Anyway, you all take it easy and join me for the next one. We'll probably be able to, I'll probably do a BSR one tomorrow night, and uh, we can uh, we can we can discuss the BSR. Uh, there'll be seventies BSRs. Thanks for watching, folks, and uh, bye for now. La 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 la. la. Oh, wrong one. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin slown away. Cold Jack lost his lollipop, so he bought a Milky Way.